Committee of the whole meeting is called to order. Do you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Alderman Edwards? Here. Alderman Simpson? Here. Alderman Turner? Here. Alderman Lesko? Alderman Canman? Here. Alderman Joe? Here. Alderman McMiniman? Here. Alderman Tylan? Alderman Dove? Here. Alderman Griffin? Here. Thank you. Madam Clerk, um, I need a motion to approve the August 27, 2013 committee meeting. So Min moved. Minutes. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? All right. Those opposed? <clears throat> Mr. Treasurer, you have a report for us? Yes, Madam Chair. The corporate fund monthly cash report for the month of August, we had a beginning balance of $8,043,874. Receipts for the month of August totaled $10,305,259. Disbursements for the month totaled $10,675,871. So our ending cash balance in the corporate fund at the end of August totaled seven million six hundred seventy-three thousand two hundred and sixty-two dollars. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Are there any questions of the body? Hearing none, uh, I want to take a motion to accept the treasurer's report. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to accept the treasurer's report. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed. And uh, Office of Budget and Management. Contract report. Any questions? I uh, believe it was sent electronically. Are there any questions? Hearing none. Thank you. Uh, ordinance table and remaining in committee. Oh, uh, would the record reflect that Alderman Lesko has arrived? Yes. Thank you. Ordinances tabled or remaining in committee are 2011 104, 2012 123, 2012 226, 2012 376. 2013 128, 2013 174, 2013 193, 2013 250, 2013 260, 2013 264, 2013 266, 2013 296, 2013 312, and 2013 313. Uh, the administration has asked that we pull 2013 264 and put on the consent agenda. Are there any objections? That was the opportunity. Uh, what does it pertain to? Can you read the ordinance? Yes. Um, 2013 264 is an ordinance authorizing execution of a maintenance agreement with the New World Systems Corporation <coughs> for annual maintenance fees for the Springfield Fire and Police Departments. Well, um, I have a question. Why was this put in the committee in the first place? Why did we not vote on it when it came up? Uh, Chief here? If my memory serves me correctly we put it back in because they were working on some negotiations and stuff oh this is the it's the is that right chief yeah they were what's the this is the if you want contract to come up and with... explain to augman uh, what it is exactly i think uh refresh memories There were still ongoing negotiations, so it was held in committee. And this is for a computer uh, computer system? Uh, reporting software for, the, for the police and the fire department. And what, how much is, I mean, we don't, uh, I don't have the ordinance in front of me because it was presented to us before. What, how much, is it any increase over the previous year? Or how, what, I would have to defer to Mr. Logan and or Chief Helmrichs or Chief Williams with the police department. Okay, well, I move to put this on the debate agenda. Oh, second. second. It's been moved and second for the debate agenda. Any dis we still need you. Any discussion? Yeah, if you have an answer to the question. Any discussion? Yeah, the money has decreased from the last time. The last year we paid 251000 in 2012. It's 235000 this year. <coughs> With significant decreases from year to year. Uh, it's a five-year contract. Thank you. If we could get a copy of the ordinance, an additional copy between now and next week. Any other questions? Thank you. And um, if you could send it electronically, I think that would be that would suffice. <clears throat> if 
been moved and seconded to be put on the debate agenda is, uh, I don't hear any additional discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Madam Clerk. Oh, I'm Madam sorry. Chair. Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, also, I'd like uh, to, to, uh, 2013 312 uh, regarding the uh, Lot 5 and Cobblestone Estates. Uh, the promise was the last time that if, if everyone would defer this for, for the two week time period, that we would bring it out of committee today and bring it forward next week. I'd like to make a motion to put that on the debate agenda. Sorry. I, I know even as far as today, Mr. Joyner's been working with the Cobblestone Neighborhood Association. They've been trying to come to some middle ground and get this worked out for next week. So if we could put that on debate agenda, and then if, if we have to have a debate next week, we'll, we'll, and if not, we'll be ready to move on, please. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to put 2013-312. Uh, do you need to read it? I can. If you, if you would read into the record. Sure. 2013-312 is an ordinance approving the plan for the large-scale development of Lot 5 in Cobblestone Estates, 25th edition, for the Office of Public Works. It's been moved and seconded for the debate agenda. Any, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, are there any members of the public or any uh, representatives of the homeowners here tonight? Uh, does anyone wish to speak to this issue? There, there uh, were some. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Madam I'm Chairman, there were some people that are here representing the Neighborhood Association. I know Mr. Jordan is here as well. We talked to, we've talked to both parties today, and they both said that if we move this to debate, if, if they don't have it worked out, they'd be re ready to present something next week. But in the meantime, they'd like to just continue to work to find some middle ground. Thank okay. you, Mr. Mr. Griffin, uh, that was my understanding also. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Anyone else have anything they want to come bring out of committee? Okay, Madam Clerk, ordinances for cons committee consideration? Yes, 2013-335 is an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $1,000 from unappropriated fund balance for the Office of City Council Coordinator. Is there a motion? Move I'll make the motion. motion. Second. It's been moved and second. For consent, I'm sorry. For consent. Uh, is there any discussion? Just uh, a question, uh, maybe Joe. What, what, what I, I'm assuming are we have real old computers and they need to be replaced, or what's the situation? Pardon? That's correct. Yeah, how old are the computers we currently? Uh, mine's eight and Janet's seven. All right, thank you. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? 2013-336 is, is an ordinance authorizing payment to Robert Hamilton, an Office of Public Works employee, to settle a workers' compensation claim for case number 13WC16110. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and second for the consent agenda. Any discussion? Hearing yes. none? I have a question uh, for whoever's knowledgeable about this case. or. <coughs> Corporation Council. Corporation Council. Okay. So does this particular uh, employee, Mr. Hamilton, has he had any prior workers' comp uh, claims against the city? Uh, or Nate, can you answer? Pardon me. You know, I, don't, I don't know. Corporation Council, you can't answer that either. Yeah. All right. Well, can you see if we can get that information okay. for us before next week? Now, who prepares these narratives here about the workers' comp cases? Usually. Uh, I think Chris Menard, I think. Chris Menard, and she's in your office? Yes. Yeah. I was wondering if in the future, uh, as a matter of routine in all these workers' comp cases, if we could have the information as to whether the particular employee has had any prior workers' comp cases against the city and what the result of those prior okay. cases were. Sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alderman, you still want to leave it on the consent? Uh, yeah, we could leave it. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? 2013-337 is an ordinance approving the tentative agreement for a 2013 wage reopener only with the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers for a 2% across the board wage increase effective October 1st, 2013 for the firemen and oilers at the power plant. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? I have a question. I'm just wondering. It says here that the contract, we just approved the contract like a month and a half ago, July 3rd, 2013. Well, I'm just wondering why it's coming up so quickly for a wage reopener. Mm -hmm. Well, the contract was negotiated 
uh, for October 1st, 2011 through September 13, 2014. So obviously that took a little while to negotiate the successor contract and each of the subsequent years we agreed to a wage reopener. Okay, so this is just the first first year on that? Okay. Of the wage reopener only, 20, yes. July 3rd, 2013, that's when we passed, we ratified it, this current contract in the city council, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, Ms. Barden, we had a conversation this week about, I've got a, had a continuing request for two plus years that we always state the old hourly rate of pay and the new hourly rate of pay and I hope you'll make sure that gets uh, placed in the ordinance information for each wage reopener and each uh, union agreement. I, I think you said you're going to send me that hourly rate of pay information but I did not get it so I don't know what happened on that. I responded to your email that Friday and subsequently followed up with a conversation when you were going camping so maybe you didn't receive that I don't know but I absolutely did provide you those rate information. Thank you very much. I can provide you a copy if you want and certainly as I indicated on the phone to you this will show up in every subsequent ordinance. There was a little bit of misunderstanding, but if you want the individual wage rates, I have no problem providing that. Thanks a lot. I must have missed it, so sure. I apologize. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? 2013-338 is an ordinance approving the tentative agreement for 2013 wage reopener only with the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers for a 2.1% across the board wage increase effective October 1st, 2013 for the CWLP garage. Is there a motion? Mo move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-339 is an ordinance approving the tentative agreement for the 2013 wage reopener only with the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers for a 2.1% across the board wage increase effective October 1st, 2013 for the Dahlman Machinists. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-340 is an ordinance authorizing the execution of a tentatively agreed to memorandum of understanding with the City of Springfield, Office of Public Utilities, and the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 193, regarding member disciplinary impact issues associated with the installation of GPS tracking systems in Office of Public Utilities vehicles. Is there a motion? Move to debate. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the debate agenda. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Mr. Griffin? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, maybe it's just a clarification, and I, I don't remember seeing one of these before. The, uh, I don't understand why we enter into a, memo, uh, a memorandum of understanding in order to put GPS tracking systems in our own vehicles that we own and the taxpayers pay for and insure and put gas in, and we allow them to take them to do their job why do we have to ask if it's okay to put GPS systems in those cars? We do not have to use the, or ask the union uh, whether it's okay to actually place them into the car. What we have an obligation uh, to negotiate under the Labor Act is any impact that that has on the terms and conditions of employment. So if we intend to use these for the purpose of discipline, then I have to negotiate the scope and how we can use that for the impact purposes of placing a GPS system. So we don't negotiate the decision. We have the right to buy them. We have the right to install them. But under the Act, I have to negotiate the impact and how that can be used for disciplinary purposes. If our vehicles are used the way we order them to be used and they get in the truck at our garage and drive to the job site they're assigned to, there should not be any disciplinary action taken because they've done exactly what they're to do. The only way there'd be any impact is if they were doing something that they were not to do. Potentially, yes. And so sometimes I, I we just have to verify the public. The public, well, there is a, there's an obligation under the Labor Act to bargain the impact of it. And if we would refuse to bargain the impact of that, we have many of these. I negotiated at the Department of Corrections when I was there for surveillance cameras as for GPS on, on the um, any of the inmate transportation systems. We've done these here at Public Works. They've insta installed these, and we've had to negotiate the impact. The reason why you're first seeing this before you 
is because of the ordinance that this brought by Mr. Cam and I believe that any memorandum of understanding on impact issues that does not simply interpret the contracts but actually adds to it and we've never had GPS as an issue in CWOP before so this is an addition to the contract midterm it now has to be come before this uh, council to be ratified. So was it our decision or, or the bargaining unit's decision that there could be some dis some misuse of these vehicles? I mean, I, did, I didn't, I would never have any idea that we would have any thought that they'd be using these any way than what they're supposed to be doing. I mean, I never would have thought that we would have to check up on anybody. This, the primary purpose is definitely not, and that's what this memorandum of standing is trying about to. Being it's not the primary about. purpose for us to be checking up, but if in the, the course of, of business, we have an independent complaint, we certainly can use this GPS to verify, to substantiate the complaint or exonerate that it did, did or did not happen. So with this GPS, we can have historical data of where this car was over the last two days, three weeks, four months, whatever it may be, right? There's a, a boat we can report, get a report on that. Yes. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, we already, these GPS devices, we already have them in the public works vehicles. We've had that for some time, is that correct? Yes. Okay, when we adopted, when we first put them in the public works vehicles, did we enter into a similar memorandum of understanding with the uh, unions that represent those workers? Yes, we did. And that was mainly asked me, Council 31. Okay, and is this essentially the same as uh, that those memora that memorandum of understanding? It, it is essentially the same. Um, obviously, we have a obligation to negotiate independent with each union that, on their impact issues, but definitely the essence of this isn't for the sole purpose for disciplinary, it's for safety, X, Y, Z, but if we were to use it for disciplinary purpose, then the terms that we've negotiated apply. If we wanted to install these GPS devices and say we're not going to use this we're not going to use any information that we get from the GPS for disciplinary purposes, then we wouldn't have to, we wouldn't be, need to negotiate an MOU. Is that correct? Then we would be waiving any right for us to right. use it Question. for disciplinary purposes. Yes, Alderman. Let's say, and I don't like to work in hypotheticals, but the city doesn't use a GPS. Somebody takes a picture on their iPhone of a truck and says this is where they're at and the city doesn't use this, do the rules still apply or can we do discipline without having to go to this MOU? If we decide just to use the independent source that was brought to us, we can certainly use that. It would be on a case-by-case -case basis or we can go to this and even check the GPS system to substantiate. Yeah, but I'm saying you don't. And do you, I think what I heard my colleagues say, and I think this is what's very frustrating to the public, you have a, somebody that's assigned to the White Oak Mall area, and for whatever reason, they're at Carpenter Park. Not even close to where they're supposed to be. And the city has to go through a grand litany of steps to discipline somebody, and it just drives the public absolutely berserk. And, and I think there's a lot of frustration. And, you know, you have to protect the employees, I know. But it, it gets to the extreme where management's getting held to a higher standard. Well, I only can respond to that, that Illinois has the most... Um, and that's why Illinois is in the shape it's well, in. Well, <laughs> the Labor Relations Act mandates to negotiate over terms and conditions. This and that's why Illinois is in the shape it's in. <laughs> So I want to keep us out of legal trouble. Out. I believe this is what you know, we've done our due diligence. And if we were to use this, and we will be using this for disciplinary purposes, we now have a negotiated agreement. How has it worked so far with other departments? Uh, it's, it's worked well. From my knowledge, I do know a particular case that actually, um, based upon the evidence presented to us, because we were able to check the GPS system, it actually exonerated the employee that was at issue. Um, so has, has it works both ways. So has the reverse been true too? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And um, it's administered fairly? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. What, 
Yes, sir. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I just heard a story on the radio today about uh, the black boxes in motor vehicles. Apparently, the lieutenant governor of some state uh, was stopped for speeding, and uh, he gave the police officer a story that the black box in his vehicle totally uh, conflicted with. So do some of these vehicles also have these black boxes that record the speed and various other movements of the vehicle, and can those be used for disciplinary purposes too? This tracking system, as I understand it, well, will black box record is something all of else. it. I don't know the black box, but this system, the capability. Any GPS system will give you a location and time. Speed is distance over time, so you can just you have that. You can back calculate what the average speed was between two points. So, you know, any of those systems can calculate speed. They don't transmit it, but once you have the data of a time and a location, and the next time and location, you can calculate speed. That's all the software does. I think, uh, if I may, Madam Chair, I think what Alderman Cameron is referring to is some heavy-duty vehicles. Large trucks will have an indicator separate and apart from the GPS. It tells you what gear you're in, what speed you're in, what speed you're in at certain gears, and I think that's what Alderman Cameron is there, there are There are a whole level of, you can buy much higher end systems that they'll tell you how many miles are on there and maintenance reminders that come up and indicate pressure, tire pressure. Yeah, you can get those connected and communicate back. These are strictly just GPS location devices, they're not the other devices. I think he's asking a different question. I think he's asking. Well, that's not relevant to it. Yeah, I, it's I, not I, 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 it's yes, related. I think what he's trying not. to say is that if, if we're applying rules for these GPS boxes, do we have similar rules for the independent other tracking <laughs> devices that has to do with engine speed, engine uh, transmission gears, and that kind of thing? So it, it may be relevant or may not be. <coughs> I would say we don't have that, correct? OK. Um, well. Madam Chair, if I might, it's it's in. I mean, it's in a lot of vehicles you buy. Vehicle and most, I think, I, this what I heard in the story today was most vehicles that you purchase today, as a just a member of the public, a pass a passenger vehicle, have these devices in them. So, but that's all. And if we put ours, we'd have to do it in MOU, right? Uh, you know, if the vehicle comes with something, the computer comes with it. So I, I don't know. What's the cost Madam of the Chair. GPS systems? What's, what's the cost? Um, they are leased on an annual basis and are they? we pay per unit. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Every car has what Sam's talking about. If you've seen the commercial that one insurance company has where you can plug that into the data, it'll tell you your average speed, your average gas mileage, how many miles you drive a day, the whole bit. And I think the question is, if we were to get those and plug them into vehicles, could that be used in the same vein? that a GPS is being used. Is that yes. what you're trying to ask, Sam? Yeah. Yes. Well, my understanding is they're already in vehicles. They are. Vehicles. I don't know that we've ever used it. And if we're going to use it for disciplinary purposes, then my answer would remain the same, that we have an obligation to, to negotiate the impact of it. This is related to GPS. So if we do do that, then our past practice would prevail. If we've never done it, then I'd have to put the units on, the unions on notice that we intend to do so and we'll negotiate the impact. Any additional discussion? Thank you. All those in favor for the Aye. debate agenda? Aye. 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 Those opposed? 2013-341 is an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement with and authorizing payment in the amount of $57,800 to Kaplan Financial Consulting Incorporated to serve as the, as the city's independent financial advisor regarding the city's general obligation bonds for the infrastructure program for the Office of Budget and Management. Move to there, debate. Second. It's been moved and second for the debate agenda. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I, are we also going to be hiring <laughs> bond counsel for the sale of these bonds? Yes, Lawyers? we will. Yes, Pardon? yes, yes, we will. Okay, that'll come sometime down the line, I take it. This, this is the first step. This particular individual has worked on 15 prior issues for the city dating back to 1997. So they might recommend the bond counsel to the city? Uh, well, they could, but we've had other bond councils that we've looked at and that we have used in the past. So we have one in mind. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, Director McCarty, uh, you're aware that uh, this contract with Kemper provides that Kemper would manage the bond sale process. Uh, that's on page two of the agreement. Uh, 
And the reason for directing our attention to that provision of the contract is when we let some bonds recently for the utility, I remember we had a discussion about whether the bonds would somehow be made available to our local investors here in the Springfield area. And I got the impression during those discussions early on that yes, there'd be an attempt to make the bonds available to our local investors. And then as, as it turned out, I don't think much effort was made. So is there a representative from Kemper here or um, Director McCarty, do you have any idea whether Kemper will have any way to promote or make these bonds available to our local investors? These bonds are exempt from federal income tax and I believe possibly from state of Illinois income tax. They might be double exempt and be highly attractive to our investors. Okay. A couple things. Number one, it's uh, independent Mr. Dan Kaplan, not Kemper. Sorry. His contract is with. Uh, secondly, as addressing your concern about making them available to local residents here, taxpayers and ratepayers, I have addressed that with Mr. Kaplan. He understands the position of the city, and in fact, I had a meeting today with a financial institution that is interested in potentially being our underwriter or at least a partial underwriter of this issuance. I explained it to them, what we would be looking for, and the bottom line is it's not going to be a problem. That's really good to hear. Yes, it will be a point of emphasis on this issuance that there will be some way, somehow, the opportunity for local residents to get involved on the retail level. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-342 is an ordinance authorizing execution of an addendum to a redevelopment agreement with the Salvation Army to extend the completion date to June 30th, 2015 for the reha rehabilitation of property located at 100 North 9th Street. Is there a motion? Move the consent. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Any discussion? What was the, yes, if I may, what was the old, the current uh, project completion date and the current ordinance? Two months ago. Okay, June 20th, 2013. I see that. Was that it? Um, I believe the uh, completion date was um, May of this year, which they did not make, obviously. They've encountered some fundraising problems with respect to the project. And this, the TIF will still be in existence at this, at this date, the, the new date. Is that correct? The new July date, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Looks like in the ordinance, the old completion date was no later than June 30, 2013. So. Paul Sounds Director cool. Farmer, do we know where, I mean, where are we at with this? Have, is this one of the deals where we're, they're not going to initiate until the fundraising goals have been met, or is this something that we're currently, I, I the rehab has started and we're just not to a point where we can complete it at this point? Or? I can't speak for Salvation Army. I know that there's been some changes within their uh, organizational structure here locally. They have any major, um, one of their staff members is, uh, I don't know, I think he's right there. Uh, major Woodard. Uh, I'm, address, uh, I'm going to answer your question. Uh, we are moving forward uh, with construction. We just got some bids. Uh, we will be sending out in six months, starting from October. So construction will start on uh, a phase, I mean a phase project. We're going to move for the, the completion of that uh, to start uh, construction even as of maybe March of 2014. I'm sorry, Major, would you state your name? Sorry. Uh, Stephen Woodard, uh, Major Stephen Woodard with the Salvation Army. Um, it's my understanding, too, through your charter, you can't start any projects until you're fully funded. Is that right? We are starting the, the project, actually, uh, through our charter, but through our divisional and territorial headquarters out of uh, In that, I, I think when we were doing some fundraising for you guys, mm -hmm. that's what they told us. We can't do anything until we have the money secure to do our projects. That's we will what do. Uh, what we can do is what we take it through a phase project. Uh, so we are going to continue to work through the, the completion of the whole project, but we'll do it in phases now compared to and as we receive those funds. Uh, but we will start construction as we'll send out the, the project for bid uh, as, in October. Alderman McCann. So, thank you. So you, you're planning to do this in phases. How many different phases? Are there are planned? three phases. So, okay, originally I, I, I had heard the same thing as Alderman Edwards that you added in your rules that you couldn't start construction until you had raised all the money you needed for the entire project. But now 
things have changed and you can do a phase, once you've raised the money you need for phase one, you can start on phase one and then right. so on. And then, so, okay, so you've raised all the money for phase one uh, uh, now, is that correct? From our uh, capital campaign uh, numbers, that's what we're looking at within that first phase, yes. Correct. So, and then that would be, so your, and your projection is that would start construction March 2014? Correct, and then a construction uh, date of 15 months which would make it to the May 2015, which still is within the side of uh, the June 5th. For, you know, for all the phases. Correct. What, what, what are the, can you tell us what the three different phases are and when you're- Sure, the th three different phases. The first phase is to uh, actually uh, taking a, our existing program to do a relocation, uh, taking the existing programs out of our Sixth Street location, uh, shelter beds of 36 beds, uh, uh, health, clinical health space, uh, also moving the chapel, moving the administrative offices, and moving that into the three-story uh, building on uh, 9th Street. The second phase, uh, there's, there's a phase, uh, sections to that. One is a family shelter uh, that we'd like to have on the second floor. There's a youth uh, section, a, a part of that second floor as well. Uh, that's part of the second phase. And there's uh, the third phase is moving into extending uh, shelter beds. Uh, moving our 36 beds to uh, an opportunity to go to 100 beds. So initially, the first phase, you're just going to be creating the same number of beds in this uh, new shelter as you have in your old shelter, 36? With the extension of maybe two, two to four that we might be able to add additional to that, those beds. Okay. And when you do the family shelter, how many beds will be in the family shelter? Right now it's looking at six, six to eight family Units. Six to eight families, how many total people? Uh, it depends on the, the family size uh, to that point. Maybe it's on average maybe three to four individuals within that family. Alderman Joe. Then I had another one if I may. And then with regard to the, then you're going to build additional shelter space in the third phase for just single people. Is that right? Correct. For, and then for how many additional day. beds will be in that third phase? Well, that's an additional, that's about the 64 that. So if you have the 36, or if you take 40, you'd have an additional 60 beds. And in doing so, we're, we're hoping to incorporate I'm, the I'm SOS. I'm not following you. You said your first phase, you're going to have 36 beds, and right. then about. And then in the third phase, you're going to create some additional beds. So I'm asking you, how many additional in the third phase? So it'd be 64. 64. And when do you expect that third phase to be finished? That depends on uh, as the income comes into that to, to support that. Okay, increase. but certainly by June 30th, 2015. That's that's the plan. Thank Alderman you. Joe. So, Madam Chair, I, I guess, I mean, I, I'm, I hope we're not confusing the general public tonight. The, the project scope is not changing, correct? No, not at all. All we're asking, all you're asking, because as the director told us, because of fundraising difficulties, you're just asking for your end date to be pushed back. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that clarification, Alderman Joe. Thank you, Major. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-343 is an ordinance accepting the bid and authorizing the execution of contract UE-1406-35, Unit 31 and 32, SCR Catalyst Changeout with Henson Robinson Company in an amount not to exceed $244,086 for the electric division. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Yes, Alderman Doug. I have a question on the bids real quick, just to break down what you had in here. There's a line in here for a discount for awarding both bids to a single bidder. And um, Hanson Robinson has 5%, Hayes Mechanical has 2%, and Sheck Industrial has 0% on that discount. Um, but it looks like they all bid for both projects. So how do you break down who gets 5, who gets 2, and who gets 0? Well, the, the I think the five percent discount is local vendor preference. No, that's below that. Okay, that's above me. Um, I would have to take a look at that one on bidding for both parts. I don't know if I've got a breakdown of that. Because if you take that five percent out, then Hayes Mechanical obviously it's a lower bidder. That's why I'm just curious. So I just want to know how that's decided. What's that? Yeah. Could you, what's the, what's the response? I mean, I'll have to figure out exactly. So what is the question? Why well, is there I, a discount? I wonder why. I mean, the way that it's, I mean, maybe it's 
it's stated wrong here in this line, but it says discount for awarding bulk bids to a single bidder. I would assume that discount is from you guys because you guys decide that there's a discount for awarding both bids to a single bidder. And if you look through them, if they've all bid on both projects, I would assume they all have the same discount. But I don't understand why one has 5%, one has 2%, and the other one doesn't have any. Um, Tracy is kind enough to inform me. The vendor actually fills that in. It's the discount that they will give if they win both jobs from their price. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. Uh, if, Madam Chair. Yes. The uh, description says that uh, Henson, the company, the winning company here, Henson Robinson, is a local vendor. Did they get the contract because of the local vendor preference? Or? Yes, they because of that they're. Otherwise, it'd be fifty-seven hundred dollars higher. Okay, so because of local preference, our extra cost is fifty-seven hundred dollars. Yes. Any additional discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Twenty thirteen three forty four is an or is an ordinance authorizing additional funding in the amount not to exceed $275,000 under contract number UE 101077 with Harsco Corporation for the generating facilities scaffolding for a total amount payable of $3,300,000 for the Office of Public Utilities. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I have a question. This, all this, uh, money is for just purchasing scaffolding equipment it's not purchasing oh or it's renting. for rental and installation and and removal okay so the companies they're going to install the scaffolding where we need it and then take it away yeah it's inside the boilers and it goes up oh. multi-stories and it's they have it's special structure to go on to uneven services and this is how you actually make repair to the boiler tube so they have to scaffold from the bottom up and then you have to take it down before you can put the units back online. So it's a very specialty trade. Who, and who actually does the work inside the boilers? Is that our employees or some kind Sometimes of our contract? employees, a lot of time is, it's contractors who specialize in, it's, it's special composite alloys that the tubes are made out of and welding and replacing the tubes. Okay, but it's contract, not somebody from the scaffolding company, but another other kind. Correct, they just come in a scaffold and then other, other crews come in and actually do the work. Is this similar to, it seems like a lot of money for scaffolding. Is this similar to other, you know, costs we've paid in the past for this service? Uh, we, yeah, we put it out for a bid, and, and there's no local companies that do it. This firm's out of St. Louis. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-345 is an ordinance approving and authorizing execution of an agreement with General Electric International Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $129,723.96 for the purchase of spill strips for Unit 33 for the Office of Public Utilities. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? 2013-346 is an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $150,000 for the Office of Public Works Waste and Recycling. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and second for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? I, I have a question. Yes. For somebody from Public Works or, or Recycling, is it? So this is the money raised from the increase uh, in the recycling fee? Yes, sir. So we're, we raise more money than we from that fee increase than we anticipated. That uh, the amount anticipated was not budgeted in the beginning of the year. The amount recognized, um, as this is an estimate, and we're um, supplementally appropriating the amount we feel uh, we'll receive in. So it's not that we raised more money than we anticipated. It's just that it wasn't put, it wasn't appropriated in the budget. That's okay. Mr. McMenamin. Uh, do we know how this money will be spent on any particular programs? I do not. You mean no decision has been made or? Um, I've not been part no. of those discussions with Director Mahoney. Okay, I understand Mr. Mahoney's out of town. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any additional discussion? Thank you. 
Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? 2013-347 is an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $100,000 for the Office of Public Works. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-348 is an ordinance authorizing payment for tipping fees to Sangamon Valley Landfill for costs associated with court-ordered demolition demolitions of unsafe and dangerous structures in the amount not to exceed $138,624.17 for the Office of Public Works. Move for consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? 2013-349 is an ordinance authorizing the execution of an annexation agreement with Real Life Church for the property located at 2450 Taylor Avenue. Is there a motion? Uh, move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, I think it needs oh, to be on the debate. Oh, debate. Sorry, sorry. move to debate. Second. It's been, it's been moved and seconded for the debate agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing I none. Just, I have a question. Does anyone know why they're seeking to this church is seeking to be annexed into the city is they just decide they want to be in the city or what's behind this my understanding is for water service oh. thanks any additional discussion hearing none all those in favor aye, aye. aye. those opposed 2013-350 is an ordinance annexing certain described real property, certain described property for real life church located at 2450 Taylor Avenue. Is there a motion? Move to debate. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the debate agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those Aye. opposed. 2013-351 is an ordinance authorizing execution of a supplemental preliminary engineering service agreement with an authorizing payment of $42,016.50 to Cummings Engineering Corporation for the Fayette Avenue Bridge over the Jacksonville Branch. Who to consent? Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-352 is a resolution notifying the State of Illinois Department of Transportation that additional motor fuel tax funds in the amount of $42,016.50 may be used for additional preliminary engineering services for the Fayette Avenue Bridge over Jacksonville Branch. Moved to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-353 is an ordinance <coughs> authorizing execution of an agreement with the State of Illinois Department of Transportation for traffic signals, sidewalks, and bike lanes on Dirksen Parkway for the Office of Public Works. Moved to consent. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. I have a question. And I don't know if you can answer this question for me, but I was reading over the information. And in the agreement, uh, there's a letter to Mayor Houston, and it said, included in the agreement are the following exhibits or attachments. Uh, and, and they list them. And one is an ordinance adding Mike Houston Street to the municipal street system. Was that supposed to be in here? I'm sorry. I just... Here. It's right here. Uh, uh, yeah. Should, could we amend Mike that to Houston council way? <laughs> <laughs> this actually was just a cover letter. It should not be included in the agreement. But is it part of the agreement? No, that, that can be removed from the agreement. I, cause I have all the men who want it to be council way. <laughs> Madam Chair. So I, I just need clarity. This if ordinance. we could remove that sheet from the from the agreement. Yep. So that sheet will come out. That's correct. Okay. Well, you guys can do that. <laughs> I mean no offense, Mayor, but <coughs> I'd like a street named after me. Well, maybe I can make that amendment for you. <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> Alderman Cameron, did you have something? Uh, yes, I don't know. Well, I'll just stick to the uh, stick to the issue here. You, you. you wanted it named after you. Didn't you? No, I thought maybe we'd name it after all Chairman Simpson. But uh, but anyways, uh, I like it, no, Chairman but, Simpson way. I like that. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, 
the, the, we're, our share of this is 112,000. Uh, what is the total cost of this project? I believe it's 9.5 million. And this is going to make Dirksen Parkway four lanes from uh, Clear Lake all the way till where it is four lanes now. Is that correct? That's correct. It'll actually make it a five lane section from Ridge to Clear Lake Avenue. All right. Well, this is certainly a much better <coughs> improvement. <coughs> well, the speed limit won't change on this on there on this street. That's my understanding. And it will really complement the work that's already been done on Clear Lake. It'll make it very nice and leading into the right-hand turn. It'll be very, a lot safer than what it is right now. Excuse me. <laughs> May I be recognized to speak, please? It will make it much nice. It will complement <laughs> what's happening out there now, and it'll be much safer. Thank you. Thank you. A little levity. That was good. <laughs> Um, so it's on the consent agenda, and, and step, there's no further discussion. All those in favor? All right. Let's right. close. 2013-354 is a resolution notifying the State of Illinois Department of Transportation that motor fuel tax funds in the amount of $112,000 may be used for traffic, traffic signal sidewalks and bike lanes improvements on Dirksen Parkway. Is for the consent. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-355 is an ordinance approving the final plat of Legacy Point Town Center, Phase 4, for the Office of Public Works. Is there a motion? Move the consent. Second. It's been moved and second for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-356 is an ordinance approving the plan for large-scale development of the outlets at Springfield in Legacy Point Town Center for the Office of Public Works. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Could we get a list of the outlet stores? Because people you. ask I'd me like that, that every <laughs> day of the week. Someone says, what's those outlets coming? When are they coming? Who's going to be there? Do we know? No idea? Okay. Well, well, when you do, let us know, because I guess the people are asking, too. <laughs> Every day. I want to know also. Anyway, so no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 2013-357 is an ordinance approving the reappointment of Dan Long to the Springfield Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Madam Chair, yes. may I uh, request that we hold this in committee uh, for the reason that I've talked with uh, Bill Logan, and um, Dan Long is out of country at the moment, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not sure exactly when he'll return to country, and uh, I, I think he's a strong appoint, appointee based on everything I know. I know Dan Long. He works for the state, and I've uh, observed him on the Springfield Housing Authority, and so I've got no problem at this point with Mr. Dan Long, but I think it would be useful for him to be back in town so that if we have any policy questions we wish to ask him, we can do so. And if, if I suppose we could put it on debate, but then maybe it's not a good idea to ask those questions of him at a full council meeting. It would be better to ask those questions at a committee of the whole type meeting. Does anybody have any objection to that? Is this going to create a, a time where we're a vote short or something? Uh, according to Bill Logan, there's no rush to this appoint, appointment. I think. Madam Chair. Yes. And I think he's on the Housing Authority That's now. That's correct. Right? This is a so they serve until their, their replacement is appointed. So he would just continue to be on the Housing Authority. <coughs> okay. So we want to leave this in committee. Thank you, okay. Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, is there any unfinished, unfinished business to come before this body? Any new business? Yes, Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to let everybody know that the annual treasurer's report was filed with the city clerk's office and the county clerk's office. You should have received an email, but if you want a hard copy, we can make that for you, and that should be on the city's website by the end of the week for public viewing. Thank you. Any additional new business come before the council? Um, any citizens who wish to request uh, to address the committee? Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you approach the podium, can you just state your name and address, please? And 
You have about five minutes. My name is Margie Wilson. I live at 18 Alberta Lane in the Jerome area. So um, from what I found out today, I really don't have a alderman that represents me because of Jerome being its own municipality. Right. Um, but it recently came to my attention that um, there is no ordinance in the books on, in Springfield that uh, requires jewelry, jewelry stores to keep a log of any stolen jewelry that they may purchase for meltdown. And I recently had an incident with a family member where a, my mother's heirloom ring was sold to Clover and Sons, and there's no recourse that we can take against them because there's no ordinance that makes them keep a log of what they're buying or keep the jewelry for a certain amount of time, like 30 days, like pawn shops are made to do. They have no ordinance to where they have to even keep um, any information on who they bought the, the purchase was made from. And I just think it's outrageous that we can make people have to show identification and driver's license and thumbprints for turning in copper, but nobody's being responsible from these jewelry stores to keep a log of who's coming in with stolen jewelry from families and burglaries to buy their drugs and nobody's being held responsible for it. Uh, Alderman Griffin. Actually, uh, as you leave tonight, if you could probably give your, your number to the police officer in the back, uh, uh, Cliff Busher and, well, Robbie Williams at the time and the mayor's office had actually, and, and I co-sponsored an ordinance to actually address that exact situation. They were trying to work out the details with some of the larger buyers within this area. So if you could leave your number with this officer in the back, you'd probably be able to pass that on to. Uh, I, I would really appreciate it because, you know, these kids and adults, they know where to go. They know where they can sell this stuff. And the response from the jewelry store when we went in there trying to locate my mother's ring was um, there's no ordinance. We don't have to keep records. Yeah. Call the police department. There's nothing they can do. All yeah. the networks. Yeah, just because there's no ordinance, does state law cover it, corporate counsel? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not. Sure I mean, about don't that. don't stop with us because. I mean, if there's state as law as out there, we'll investigate and see as if As far as an individual, if I get caught with stolen property, I can be prosecuted. Is that not correct? That's yes, true. So I see what the problem is. They'd already melted it down. So we haven't, you know, even though they have a log in their checkbook that he was in there five times within a month and sold this jewelry, they immediately sent it off and had it melted down. And yeah. she had no problem saying, send the police in all you want. There's nothing they can do. Um, again. Um, Alderman Griffin, I, I, don't, I didn't hear exactly what you said, but I know some months ago you had introduced an ordinance about report something to do with this did that you know that uh, did that cover the situation yes or? it did it's, I got okay. I actually still have a file right here no. uh, it's half inch thick of stuff we they've, they've, they've actually looked at all the different facets and there are some some hurdles that they still had to work through I know they've been kind of busy on some other things lately I've, I've talked to at least 20 people that has had the same thing happen to them the jeweler even informed me that one lady was able to come back in and buy her stuff back because they hadn't melted it down yet. And the police department was ones that did bring it forward, that they were frustrated, they had some concerns about being yeah. able to address it and wanted to have something in place that would allow to give them some steps. And I and, talked and to police, the Springfield well, that, Police Department that, today also. That makes no sense. It doesn't. Because if you have stolen property in your possession, why would you have to buy it back, corporate counsel? Uh, so Somebody. these jewelers... You shouldn't have to buy it back. I think the issue there would be um, perhaps maybe the, the mother did not want to press charges against her son. Oh, so well, and then instead of having the police, if it was me, I would have had him thrown in jail. But <laughs> I, I understand that that's an issue with some parents. All the way, Griffin? And part of the unique problem that we have here is, is a ring is, oh, that's mine. Well. You know, when you have electronics, you have guns, you have stuff with serial numbers, you have, you have bills of sale, you have a, a paper trail that does, whereas some of this heirloom jewelry really doesn't have any type of identifying marks or paper trails, and this is what's caused some of this frustration. Because it's then, over 40 years Right, old. they're going to come walk in and say, that was my grandmother's ring. 
how are you going to prove it's not? So how would then the jewelry, the jewelry who had purchased it in good faith have to turn that over then free of charge, et cetera? So those are some of the things that they were trying to work through, and they've been working through. I know they've been uh, had met with the uh, gentleman from the Gold Center and some of the bigger buyers that deal and on large amounts. And we really to get wouldn't that have had out. a problem buying it back so that they're not out the money. But they're very well aware of the fact that when this person comes in five times within a month and selling female jewelry, that it's probably stolen. Thank you. And follow what Adam Griffin yeah, said. Yeah, if you could, if you could talk to that officer right there, he would, he'll would he get your number and, and pass along to uh, Cliff Porter. Gentleman in the back. Can you, again, state your name and address? Hi, my name is Tony Parkhurst, a uh, citizen here in Springfield, Illinois. I addressed this city council with the mayor over a year ago on an issue that still exists today. Uh, I have been called <laughs> accused of a crime that I didn't commit or insinuated by one of your sergeants. I have a problem with the building and zoning board and I, I hope that this city council would see the wisdom in acting proactively and uh, getting the records from the building and zoning. Because I had a building, a requested a building and zoning <clears throat> inspection of a certain business here in town. And after the Freedom of Information Act request was told uh, in these reports that no other document existed, that they've done the building inspection, they passed. Through some information I got, I again requested it and uh, all of a sudden, they found a letter from another building inspector on his private computer outside the building uh, or wherever they were looking for these records from, <laughs> stating to this business owner, as our business, the building owner of the business, where our business is at, that um, oh, what was it? lost my train of thought here for a second. That as soon as he gets everything fixed, all the violations fixed, let him know and he'll come out and reinspect. Now that's the letter that was hidden on a computer. Now this building was known to have defects before it was rented and, and has a business in there. I brought it up several times to the uh, chief of the fire service here. I was basically called a liar there. I'm in possession, and in fact, on the internet, there are documentations, and I've showed Sam Kamen a picture of a fire exit being blocked at this business for all to see. Uh, what ward is it in? Uh, whatever, uh, 411 East Adams Street, whoever's ward that is. That's you. As of this morning, when I went there at 6.30, or by there, I was checking my mail, there was a Springfield Police Department car parked across the street in this business. I called the Springfield Police Department, asked if they could go get his name, and notice if that fire exit is blocked or unblocked, because it was blocked. There was people and businesses opened. Now they told Chief Firsting, the owners assured him that they never have a fire exit blocked during business hours or that I had one our, uh, report, I was harassing the owners. Now, he won't, the chief won't give me the names of the owners that he talked to. I'm just a little curious. We got a, a building and zoning board member, our building and zoning inspector saying, well, there's no uh, safety issues here. I've been upstairs. I, I don't know if they still exist. But at the time, there was exposed wiring. When an owner of a business looks at me and says, I can't label a circuit breaker box, after an off-duty fireman comes in and does a courtesy inspection and says, hey, why don't you label that? Because we like to have both sides labeled. And the owner says that I can't label that circuit breaker box because the last time anybody touched it started a fire. Now, I don't know what's going on in the city. We, send, we spend so much time and money on the parking tickets, which I have some real problems with that. Maybe, maybe the, the, the lowest parking ticket, because you rarely endanger anybody's life with a parked car, could be the, uh, the fine for a business that wants to have a fire exit block during business hours. In fact, I, I believe it should be there before the first person enters. 
I would compromise before the first customer enters the building. Now, I have this and several other issues I'd like to bring up or perhaps discuss in front of the city uh, council as a whole or take longer than my five minutes when the mayor is here so I can address him personally because I did say this to him. I have a letter written from the last time that I didn't submit that I'd like to get out of my files. I'll submit that and any updates to that letter that I wrote and I addressed the same particular issues here. Uh, so I don't know if I can schedule a time to come in and talk adult to adult to the city council members or have uh, at least a, a, a vote that the next time I show up or sign up for to come over here and address it when the mayor's here that I may ask for an extension of the five minutes. The mayor's assistant is back there. You could probably make an appointment with him. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that wish to speak before this committee? Mm -hmm. yes. Seeing none, I'd move for adjournment. Second. I would, okay, great. You're adjourned. Thank you. All right.